Okay, so this is what our entire circuit together looks like. We've got our power supply going into the terminal block. The power is coming out of the terminal block into the LEDs. There's a ground coming out of the terminal block, and that's connected to the TNC ground. And then we have that green data line coming out of the TNC. The TNC is going through USB to the computer. Okay, so now we're going to talk about programming the Teensy, and we're going to be using software called Teensy Duino. And I'm not going to go through all the installation steps, but they are available at PRJRC, and there will be a link to that in the uh, documentation on my blog. So the first thing we're going to do is open up the Octo WS 2811 library example called Basic Test after we get everything installed successfully. Um, and we're just going to run through this to make sure the LEDs turn on. So there's very little you have to do. If you're using the Octo library, you just need to change the number of LEDs in the strip. And it does the configuration for the type of strip you're using, which in our case, WS2812, 2811s, and 2812s uh, use the same configuration code. So all you have to do is change the LED strip num uh, number of LEDs per strip and then you should be able to see your LEDs turn on. Just want to make sure you have your board selected as your TNC and you're looking at the right port before you upload it. Um, there it goes successfully and there you can see the color wiping around. So Everything looks like it's going fine with the Octo library, and we're now going to check out Fast LED library. You can use the Octo adapter with non Octo libraries. Octo library is actually built on top of Fast LED. The Nix NeoPixel library will also work. So we're going to just open up the one of the Fast LED examples. You might have to install the Fast LED library into the Arduino software or the Teensy Duino software. Um, if you install an Arduino library, it'll also show up in the Teensy software. So we're going to open up Link from Fast LEDs, and we're going to see how to configure these strips um, with more parameters. So we're changing the number of LEDs. The data pin is number two. How do you know that the data pin is number two? You're going to have to look at the documentation. So here we can see that the orange wire is LED strip number one data. This is the Octo documentation. It's orange. Uh, we remember that from earlier. And then we're going to go look at the TNC, and we're going to see that for the TNC 3.1 and 3.2, the pin number two is going to be connected to the LED strip number one. So back to the Teensy code, we don't need the clock pin, so we can delete that line. And then we're going to have to figure out which strip we're using. So we're going to we're going to comment out the NeoPixel and then find the WS twenty eight twelve B strip. And then I'm just going to quickly code all of the LEDs to turn on instead of just blinking. Okay, so I'm going to run this, and you can see that the LEDs are going to blink, but they're actually going to blink green, and the code says red. So we're going to have to go back to the code and look at where we defined our strip. And you can see we're saying it's an RGB strip, but really the order of the WS2812B uh, strip is GRB normally. You'll have to look at your documentation on your Amazon purchase, but most of them are GRB, so we're going to go to the code change that line to GRB instead of RGB, rerun it, and we're going to see that the LEDs flash red, so they're working correctly. Just to review what we just went over, I'm showing one way of connecting and programming the LEDs using the Octo library, which involves fewer setup steps, and then I'm also showing a different way of controlling the strips with the Fast LED library, where you actually define your strip and what pin the data is being sent on. Um, the session isn't about how to 
manually code LEDs. There's plenty of resources online, and I'm happy to field any questions after class about manually coding the LEDs. But we just wanted to test out that they're working, that the circuit works, so that we can upload the Mad Mapper Teensy code to the Teensy and then forget about the Teensy and code the rest of the mapping inside of Mad Mapper.